Let's look at some characteristics of imperfects. So we have our seven basic stems. We have the Cal, Nifal, Piel, Pual, Hithpael, Hifil, and Hofal. Well, let's briefly review what those are. So our Cal is called the simple or the base stem. Cal actually means light. The Nafal often will be the passive. If the Cal has a form for a particular root and the Nafal also has a form for that root, the Nafal will often be passive. If the Cal would be active, the Nafal would be passive. Now Cal is often active, we'll call this active, although it does have a lot of examples of statives like I am something, I am heavy, I am light. There's also some that are just by their nature passive. The Piel, Pual, and Hithpael are called the intensives. That's quite a broad generalization. Intensive can mean all sorts of things. It can mean intense in emphasis. It can mean intense in time, like over a long period of time, perhaps repetition. So the idea of intensive is a very general category, and it varies greatly depending on the meaning of the root and the context. And then finally, we have the Hifil and Hofal. These are our causatives. So in terms of active and passive, we have the PL would be active intensive, the Pual would be passive intensive, the Hithpile would be reflexive, reflexive intensive, and in the causatives, the Hifil would be active causative and the Hofal would be passive causative. So as an example of causative, the root Ra'a, so Resh Aleph He in the Cal means to see, but over here in the Hifil it means to show or cause to see. So to cause to see would be to show. There's an example of a root that has a form in the Cal, also has a form in the Hifil, and we see this causative idea. Now we take a look at some of the characteristics of imperfects. I've got seven listed here. In a previous video where I introduced perfect verbs, I noted that we have six features that are potentially relevant for parsing a perfect verb. So there's the prefix, a prefix vowel, which only is there if there's a prefix, the R1 vowel, R2 doubling, the R2 vowel or theme vowel, and the suffix. For the imperfect, we add a seventh possibly relevant feature, which is R1 doubling. Thus, when we look at imperfects, we have seven features we potentially have to look at. Often when we parse, we do not have to consider them all, but all are relevant at times. So let's go through these seven relevant features of imperfects. The first is the prefix, and I've got a few examples down at the bottom of the page here. So notice that for yiktol, the prefix is a yod. For this example here, tiktol now, the prefix is a tau. And then for third masculine plural, we see another yod. So there are four potential prefixes, and they will not change. So our prefixes are yod, as you've seen, tau, aleph, and noon. Those are the only prefixes you will see for imperfects. We looked at the prefix, now we'll look at the prefix vowel. Notice that for the cal form, 
the prefix vowel is a heric. And notice that that is the same for all of these forms. And in fact, as we look at the complete list, we'll see that except for one where there's a guttural that decides it wants a different vowel, mainly it's heric is our prefix vowel. Then we check our first root letter, R1, for doubling. And that would be right here for this one, the kof. So our root is kof, tet, lamed, and that's one, two, three. And so we look at the R1, which is this kof, and there's no doubling, so that's a non-issue. And I'm listing these out here for the cal column here. So the prefix vowel, heric, R1 doubling no, the R1 vowel, we see here it is a silent schwa. And that's pretty invariant. Occasionally for certain weak verbs that will be a vocal schwa. But, so it'll be a schwa in any case, but it's usually a silent schwa. The next thing we look at is R2 doubling, and there is no doubling, so we can just put a no there and move on. The R2 vowel, we call that the theme vowel, it is a holum. That's true for both of these forms. Note that for the cases where we have a vowel letter only as the suffix, this reduces to a vocal schwa. But if the theme vowel is a full vowel, it will often be a holum. Now sometimes the theme vowel will be a patach, particularly for weak verbs, if there's a guttural there, uh, either in the R2 or the R3 position. And occasionally for certain stative verbs, you'll see a patach for the R2 vowel, but for general purposes, we can say that for the cal form, we are looking at a holum. And then the suffixes. Along with the prefix, the suffix tells us the person, gender, and number of the verb. So what I want to point out here is that we determine the stem really based on these characteristics two through six. And we determine the person, number, and gender based on one and seven. So prefix suffix is what we pay attention to once we know the stem. So we use the two through six to figure out the stem then we use the prefix and the suffix to figure out person, number, gender. So let's take a look at our Cal imperfects. Notice our prefixes, yod, yod, and yod. A yod will always be a masculine form. So third masculine singular, third masculine plural, second masculine plural. The second prefix is a tau. We see tau here in third feminine singular, second masculine singular. Those forms are actually the same. Second feminine singular, and then third feminine plural, and second feminine plural. A lot of these forms have a tau. And then we have the first common singular. That's got an aleph, and the first common plural's got a noon. Looking at the prefix vowel, note that it is heric everywhere except for the first common singular. The aleph doesn't like a heric, so it takes a E-class vowel, the short E, segol. But otherwise, we can see that we have these nice regular herics as our prefix vowels. Again, we see the R1 vowel is a silent schwa, and that's uniform across all of them. And then the theme vowel, the R2 vowel, 
is a holum except in the few places where we have a vowel letter as a suffix and that then it reduces to a vocal schwa. Finally let's look at the suffixes. In many cases there is no suffix so in five of the cases we see no suffix and then we see second feminine singular has a hyric yod for its suffix. The third masculine plural has a shurek and that is also true for the second masculine plural. They have shurek. Then the third feminine plural has a na and that matches the second feminine plural which is a na. Actually the forms are identical. So third feminine plural and second feminine plural the forms are the same. They both have that na ending. The noon with the commas hey. So that is what our cal imperfects look like. Once we know it's a cal stem, then we pay attention to the prefix and the suffix to figure out the, the person, the gender, and the number.